Hey guys, what's going on? Cyber Fury here, bringing you guys some more GT7 content. Before we get too far into this, I want you to take a note of the qualifying times in this one. There are seven of us that are within a second of pole position here, making this one of the closest races I have ever taken part of in Gran Turismo 7 Online. Finally up into the C-Class here, and looking like we're going to have to fight a little bit harder for any sort of position that we want to make up or gain in this one here. This is the last of the spa content that i have and last of the backlogged content if you want to call it that here which comes from a few months ago doing some daily races when i was kind of first dipping my toes in with the first couple of weekends after this video moving forward it's going to be much more recent content i've been getting back into the swing of things of recording and racing regularly now so the stuff you're going to see may not be the most up to date as in you know it happened last night but it will be more up to date i.e as in it's not going to have happened months ago compared to these races that we have had so far on the channel. I'm also doing something slightly different with this one using the quote unquote live footage that was captured via the PlayStation flashback recording feature. This one's coming from the PlayStation 4, so this is also the last GT7 video that you'll see from the PlayStation 4 on this channel. I have a PlayStation 5's so all future content is going to feature the PlayStation 5 version of the game. Let me know which version you guys think is better or worse. Ultimately, the PlayStation 5 version is going to look better just because of draw distance and all that kind of good stuff that the PlayStation 5 can do compared to PlayStation 4. But if you have a soft spot for the PlayStation 4 still, let me know down below as both of us here just absolutely swing wide and allow P3 to come rocketing up the inside here. So some unfortunate driving so far in this one and almost very reminiscent of last video where we had the same car on the same corner doing the same exact thing. However, this time we're able to wrangle the car and get it back under control. As we see P3 that made it its way up into P1 ends up on the far right into the gravel, another place we've also been unfortunately in previous videos, which puts us back up into P2, so no harm, no foul, until this corner right here. And now this is very reminiscent of the past video where we had us doing pretty much the same thing, just a couple corners earlier as everybody takes advantage and flies past us here. Now on the replay, there is one thing that I can have a little bit of credit for, which is I do get bumped a tiny bit, which does cause me to go on the outside here. And we get another bump kind of on our exit into the wall as a, you know, letting the door hit you on the way out. So unfortunate as everybody passes us as we try to regain some speed here. As you can see, two cars, they're trading paint. So we now find ourselves in P7, which if you remember from the beginning, is we are now at the back of the pack where everybody was one second within each other in quality time. So there's a mountain ahead of us trying to get back to not only where we were, but trying to gain any sort of ground that we had before that catastrophic incident. It's not gonna be an easy one, but with the title of this video and kind of the mindset going into this one of, you know, don't give up on any races you have. All in all, we're still in P7. So halfway up the standings where it could be so much worse if we were in last place. So, and we're relatively close, all things considered. So there is some room for being able to claw our way back into this one. That's going to be the mindset so far in this race is reset on this lap and be able to move up through the ranks back to where we were. We get kind of a lucky break handed to us as the yellow Porsche gets absolutely rocketed off into the wall there. I don't know what was going on there or if two cards kind of came together and pinched them out or what was going on but it looks like there was some more paint being traded back and forth between that three grouping of cars that we saw when we kind of watched the review of us spinning out so it's a dangerous one up there but we're trying to find some space and get back into this one that puts us up into p6 so instead of now being down five positions we're only down four and things are looking up i mean we're on lap two there's still half the race basically in front of us and we are very close here up to P4, which we can see. So P4 is very much within our grasp at this point. So it's looking better and better the more this race goes on. And with more of the infighting that's happening up the pack, yeah, more chances we're gonna get to be able to move up there and take advantage of those lights. As I said before, this gameplay is the quote unquote live version of the gameplay. So let me know what you prefer, if you prefer the live version here or the slightly nicer replay version that has some, you know, slightly better lighting and slightly better visuals and whatnot. Since I know the replay mode inside of Gran Turismo 7 does add some nice new effects to the visuals of it, but it takes away some of the core components of the actual UI. One thing in particular is the relative times for some reason in the replay mode. 
they are not present and they just kind of show as blank compared to in the actual race here. They, they're showing the intended information that developers want to show there. So let me know what you prefer or if I should try and kind of hybrid the two together to give us the relative times with the replay mode or vice versa or if really if that ever matters at all. Let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for some input from you guys. But back to the action here. We see J-Mac now down in P5. He was up in P3, I believe. And he is now slipped back down to P5. He was the one that's been driving really aggressively. And speaking of really aggressively, this is kind of a really bad showcase of that from me. I really thought I had enough space to go up the inside on the Mustang, but that ended up not being the case. And it makes matters so much worse. So as I was trying to go up the inside, I ended up giving him a tap on his rear quarter panel. J-Mac and the GTR comes around and smacks him off the track. So kind of a catastrophic ending for him and a penalty for J-Mac for forcing a car off the track, which ultimately falls on me as the cause of that collision. So my apologies to both Ren V in the Mustang and J-Mac in the GTR. If you ever should end up watching this video or see it somehow, some way, my apologies there for that move. I really thought I had enough space and enough time to get up the inside on T1. As we learned, not the case however going down the straight here do you think we learned our lesson at all absolutely not trying to go up the inside again on j mac and forcing him off the road and then not thinking about renby behind the mustang as we perform an absolute horrific rejoin there right in front of him and getting bumped again so not my best showcase of driving in this one so far we've had one major spin up and two really aggressive dive bombs up the inside that have not turned out in anyone's favor so I'm willing to take full responsibility for those and it's become a learning opportunity for me to be able to shake the mindset of being wronged so far with the result of this race, you know, starting in P2 and dropping and dropping and dropping and now trying to make my way back. It becomes a moment where I need to take a step back and go, you know, am I driving too aggressively? Am I doing things the wrong way instead of the quote unquote right way or the better way of doing these types of things, which ultimately will result in the same result but without the potential for causing somebody else to feel like they've been wronged by my driving or my position on the track. So that's the new mindset that I'm trying to deal with and trying to get a grip on and trying to overcome in this race at this point. But of course, with all great learning opportunities comes room for growth. Coming across the penalty line, we see J-Max serving his four second penalty, which was kind of wrongly given to him. Ultimately, I probably should have received more of a penalty for that than he should have at all. But regardless, that puts us back up into P4. So we've been slowly clawing our way back. Our next big target becomes P3 and trying to make up the about three second gap in between us at this point. I'm not super optimistic that I'll be able to overcome a three second gap like that. But the one thing I do have that's giving me a little bit of confidence at this point is the fact that I still have the fastest lap that was set last lap while I was in P6. So I know for a fact that I am full position pace I am fast as these guys are faster than these guys technically at this point how much faster is yet to be determined but it is a confidence boost knowing that you have the fastest lap time in any race because you know that while you're trying to claw your way back as long as you can use that fastest lap as a reference to be a little bit faster than or try to at least match it in some capacity you know that you're going to be catching up to the guy in front of you and you're going to be closing the distance that you have between you as we come across sort of this after the straight here and into the next few bends, you can see the time kind of waving back and forth between three seconds and 2.8 or 2.5, whatever it's going to be. And keeping in mind that when you're going around a bend and as you're decelerating, the guy in front of you is accelerating after the turn, you have to keep that in mind for the relatives. But seeing the relative here, we are slowly but surely chipping away at the gap between us and we're slowly extending the gap to the guy behind so we know that we are actually making time up and we are actually getting close to p3 at this point so that's the kind of another big confidence boost at this point to know okay so far after this what half lap two-thirds of a lap at this point we know that we're going to be closing that distance and we are now almost within shot so any mistake they make we can capitalize on and we can be right up behind them and make this a really close race now finishing off this second sector here, we do end up having a purple time. So we are faster than our fastest lap. And as with that, we also have Ed in P3 making that mistake we were talking about. 
that allows us to go right up on his rear bumper completely fill out his entire rear view mirror he ends up going defensive around this and now it's a drag race around the very dangerous corner i will say for this kind of thing but we end up edging him out there you take p3 as we were driving super aggressive around that outside we basically went in with the mindset of if we wreck we wreck if we don't we end up with glory here so we took the chance and we kind of kept our foot on the accelerator snagging p3 and through the final chicane doing a clean enough chicane to take e3 home officially which drops us one position overall from where we started but can't say that's the worst given what we had to play with taking another look at this situation with ed in the fight for p3 around the final corners here to figure out how we didn't both end up as a giant ball of flame hurtling towards the wall i went back and hopped on board with ed here as we approach this death corner and as you can see he actually does back off and tap the brakes a little bit allowing me to fly around on the outside and gain just enough distance needed to take home p3 overall i would say it was a kind of an okay race there's a lot to learn about driving cleanly and actually knowing when you can and can't dive bomb up the inside luckily after the race ed and i exchanged pleasantries we were both saying hey that was a great race that was really close thank you for the good race and that kind of a thing and i wanted to say ed if you ever end up seeing this video any way shape or form thank you for not only the clean race but also the lesson that you taught me about being okay with giving up a position when you know you've made a mistake and the other guy is capitalizing and just prioritizing clean driving over anything else over your result in the final lap of a race here i know that's something that i kind of struggle with from time to time but i'm trying to work on that as well as i know other people are probably trying to do the same if you enjoyed the video be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you feel so compelled to I'm going to have more grand turismo content as well as other racing games coming up on the channel very soon as well as some updated Gran Turismo content coming out with the new version of the game with the new physics and whatnot. So if that excites you, feel free to follow or come back at any time when I have some more gameplay posted there. If you have any recommendations to help make these videos better, again, I'm all ears. As always, I love feedback from you guys and I love interacting with you guys. So if you want to talk about anything down below, make sure to leave a comment and I'll be sure to read it and see it. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me that people are enjoying the content that I create here, as well as finding my little corner of the internet that I like to call home from time to time. Links down below in the description, check them out. As always, I've been Cyber Fury, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.